I've never seen or witnessed nothing like it in my life. Let me tell you, this community is next to none. Okay, I think there's money to be made in this deal. Don't be afraid to walk away if it's not going to work for you. You know, it's not a bad deal. It's not a bad property. It's just it didn't work for what we needed to. That is a daunting task. I can tell you that's something that I did not do. So super applaud you for that. If you're not the one raising capital, everyone in the deal has to know how to raise cap. It's a skill that I don't care what your role is, you need to learn how to raise cap. I'm Justin Tumanowski. This is Creative Real Estate. Welcome to the Get Creative Podcast, guys. I'm your host, Justin Tumanowski, realestatejustin.com. We're here to break down the world of creative finance. And in this podcast, we dive deep into the world of creative finance, innovative strategies, and success stories from industry leaders like the gentleman I'm about to bring to you. And if you're tired of sitting on the sidelines, let's go get that first deal. Let's secure it. Join our thriving communities. Check out the descriptions below. Find out what resonates with you. If you got any questions on it, we have some dope members here. Without further ado, Chuck. Chuck, I wanted you to introduce yourself, and then I wanted to also get us into your partner. Please. Right, right. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. My name's Chuck Crawley. I'm a sub two student, Unicorn agent out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. First, would like to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity, both me, Adam, and our groups to be on the podcast. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Pace, the whole team. Appreciate the opportunity. I am a licensed real estate agent in the Cedar Rapids area, and I've only been licensed for under a year, but I joined Sub2 March 25th of this year, and it's been nothing but incredible things since the day that I've joined. This is where I met Adam, his partner, Tim, a bunch of other incredible people. Um, I'll kind of let you take it from here, Adam, and give yourself a quick introduction. Yeah, appreciate it. You know, I'm Adam Chikowski, based up in north of Boston. Been in Sub 2 since May of last wow. year. But yeah, just can't say enough good things about what Pace has done, the other community members, what he's put in place. I just can't go on long enough about it. I mean, we're giving thanks because you are here. You two gentlemen are here to talk about some, it's not one deal, it's not two. It's a six property portfolio on creative finance. So I want to give you a little applause and let's get into this, guys. I'm also in property management. And after I joined the community, I had kind of gathered a list of some properties that I knew owners were open to creative finance. Um, this was after educate myself for months, joining the community, things like that. Actually jumping into a Caroline Kane Zoom and her kind of kicking everybody's butt in that Zoom, telling you to just be active. Like, Stop listening and go be active. I promise you, I shut my laptop that day. And that's when I posted my first thing. Adam had, you know, reached out to me from there. And we had just started kind of talking back and forth, kind of going over some deals. I went to Squad Up Summit and met his partner, Tim. And from there, the, the conversations kind of kept going. And we found something that was perfect for him. Yeah, it's just like Chuck said, you have to take action. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. If you're just going to sit on the sidelines, you know, nothing's going to happen. But like Chuck said, it all started as a chain reaction. Coincidentally enough, before Chuck posted that, my partner and I, we just kind of decided upon a market, which would be Iowa. And it's like, you know, whatever is listening to you talk or put your plans together. All of a sudden I see this guy, Chuck Crowley, posting about being a unicorn agent in Iowa of all places. So like Chuck said, reached out, just had some cool conversations with him, get to know him a little bit better. And yeah, he started sending us some deals we'd take a look at and, you know, just go from there of, you know, hey, what's the situation? Why are they selling? You know, what can we do here? Get some information. And, you know, Chuck was a great resource to have for that. I mean, he truly is a definition of, you know, having a unicorn agent and an agent that gets it. You know, from there, we were able to kind of structure a creative deal, like you said, for six properties. And yeah, we closed on that about, I'd say a little over a month ago now. So good. And Chuck, I don't take you as the personality to just sit on the sidelines either. I don't think you can sit still to not take action. That's just my that's just my little inkling. But I I would say that your personality type is go get them, go do whatever it takes to go make it happen. Yeah. I mean, that's just been me is when I was in high school, I took a class and we had an opportunity to change a law in Iowa. It was one of those things where we were write letters to senators, doing news interviews, press releases, just taking action every single day. And I've just completely embodied that. My best friend, I help him with music a lot. He's actually done like songs for the Kansas City Chiefs, 
for the Golden State Warriors, for the Chicago Sky. So he does a lot of things like that. So it's just getting up, you know, putting your boots to the pavement and not just being active. I mean, Adam is the GOAT at getting creative. I mean, this guy can put together crazy offers that just make sense. I mean, it wasn't much work for me at all talking to the sellers with <laughs> with the proposals and, and the offers that Adam came with. I mean, he, he's a creative guru. Thank you for that segue because that is that shows two dynamics, right? There, You can go take the action. You can go get the deal, be the bird dog, go be the boots on the ground. I'm going to hit the streets. I'm going to hit the pavement. I'm going to go knock the doors, do whatever it takes. Then you can have the backup, another community member who you may not even have known or now know to be your support. And then Adam comes in as the you know deal architect, the creative genius behind it all. Because let's be real, I have a friend of mine, uh, one of my partners, Ted Miller. We call him like the mad scientist. When he and I go into the same room, we cook. Adam, yeah. I know who has that same ability. And Chuck, you guys can have the same dynamic too. Or, but it's also like with Tim and Adam and and then next thing you know, hey, what about this? What about that? What if we do this, this, that, and that? So Adam, go into a little bit of that. If you can talk about just where creative, the creative magic and the creative juicers may have been flowing, where it made this deal really, really unique. Normally, we don't personally like condos. You know, I hate HOAs. We're stuck with those laws, right? But this was an instance where I'm like, okay, I think there's money to be made in this deal. You know, we, we saw these in Iowa City. I had some familiarity with Iowa City because one of my best friends had lived there. His wife and him worked for the University of Iowa. As I'm talking with Tim, we're, we're talking about midterm rentals, long-term rentals, and creative juice is flowing. And we're like, well, there's a big need for this midterm rental. We talked to Chuck, kind of get his take. You know, he concurred with that. And we're like, okay, well, there's six of these from the same owners. You know, let's try and start thinking about how we can get creative to find out what are they looking to do next? Why are they selling? Those things, questions you hear, like people don't like to know this or they don't know this, but with when we're buying a deal, we're selling. We're selling ourselves, right? We still have to buy the deal. We still have to sell why we're credible to take this deal on creative finance, why an agent like Chuck would want to work with us. So even though we're the buyers, we're still selling something here and building credibility. Finding that creative juice, you know, trying to get creative, think outside the box, you know, that's really what it takes to kind of navigate through these deals. And then when you come across these challenges and obstacles, you have to keep an open mind of how are we going to overcome this? You know, how are we going to get through this? You know, we can't just sit there and wallow and feel sorry for ourselves. And Justin, I think you and I have talked about this, you know, take our ball and go home type mentality. And I think that has to do a lot with work with the people you have. You know, I couldn't do any of this without Chuck, without Tim, without our other partner, Jake without Lily on the back end being our TC. It's a collective effort. Yeah. Lily is awesome, by the way. Shout out to Lily. Yes. So we all utilize Lily. Thank you so much for everything you do, all the hard work. We're actually, she's closing a deal for us today. And that's a pre-foreclosure, sending a $50,000 check, getting reinstated. And, you know, my fingers are crossed right now. <laughs> you know, Chuck from the deal. Adam, you see what's going on. Tim sees what's going on. You guys start to, you know, have a conversation, collaborate, like give us the cliff notes on the, the back end of this deal and give us the storyline. Yeah. So, so initially I had sent them a, a few deals that we had and they were very interested in obviously the six condos and how they could structure that creatively. Forget what the initial issue was, but we ended up initially packaging in two houses that the owner had as well. And if I think if I remember right, Adam, the initial deal was structured to where they were going to buy one of the houses outright and then take over the mortgage of the six condos. And this would kind of put the cash that the seller was looking for in his pocket. Now, due to time and, you know, different changes, financing and things like that, we ended up kind of restructuring it to where it was just the six condos. But one of the incredible things that, you know, Adam and Tim did is they used a fractional, which I know a lot of community members have, have used in our community. And I think they were on the podcast not long ago. I mean, I think you guys raised like hundred grand in a day, which I thought was just very amazing, impressive. I mean, our community is awesome, man. It is isn't it? Community members are involved everywhere. You know, Fractional has some Sub 2 members behind it. Sub 2 has its footprints even in things outside of Sub 2, right? And, you know, that's a testament to Tim with his charisma of earning people's trust, knowing how to raise capital. And it was a learning deal for all of us. And I think from that, one of the biggest takeaways I learned from that deal is if you're not the one raising capital, everyone in the deal has to know how to raise capital. It's a skill that I don't care what your role is, you need to learn how to raise capital. 
Hmm. because you can never have enough capital. If you have a deal that needs a million dollars, guess what? You need to go out and raise two million just in case. Yeah, love that. Yeah, you should always be thinking about capital. Telling people what you're doing is one of the things I always love to say. Tell everybody what you're doing. Tell everybody about the real estate. Even if you think you have no right to say it and you have this imposter syndrome, talk about it. That's the one time you're going to go see an aunt, an aunt or an uncle or someone else that says, hey, I actually have this 401k that I've been thinking about putting into a self-directed and the stock market's taking a hit. What can you do with $250,000? Whatever the dollar amount is, right? You're going to give an opportunity to people that <laughs> it's not conventional. They don't know how to do what we do. So talk about what you're doing. So guys, all right. So we get it's six deals, right? Six properties. Break it down a little bit further. Let's keep going. Yeah. So like Chuck said, there was a couple of houses like duplexes in Cedar Rapids that we we're looking at as well. When we got to the point of, you know, again, the PSA, we're going to due diligence. When we kind of ran the final numbers, like did our due diligence on the back end, we felt, okay, the numbers were just weren't there to satisfy what we needed and to give back what we needed to the investors to feel comfortable there. So that's when you know, we had the discussion with Chuck saying, listen, you know, I think what we're going to do is just go with the six properties. That's what I'll tell people too that's important when it comes to underwriting is know your numbers and be honest with the numbers because mm -hmm. it's so easy for us to say, yeah, market rents 800, but I'm going to underwrite this to get to 900 because it makes the numbers look better. I think we can get it. And then <laughs> guess what? The deal closes and now you have vacant property for five or six months because you're listing at 900 and the market doesn't dictate that. And they're really so I think it's a, Exactly. So I think you have to be conservative with numbers and don't be afraid to walk away if it's not going to work for you. You know, it's not a bad deal. It's not a bad property. It's just, it didn't work for what we needed to. So we restructured it to the six. To Chuck's point, the investors were looking to buy, uh, I believe it was getting to another commercial property and they needed $70,000 to get into that. So that was their kind of walk away number. So we said, okay, well, we could still do a DSCR loan on two of these, cash you out based on what's existing on the mortgages, get you that money, and then take over the remaining four as a hybrid, sub to uh, the four mortgages, and then do a seller finance. Again, this is just where you can get killer terms. You know, you can buy in any market. You know, we got all these properties at a 4.15 interest rate on the mortgage. No one's getting those from any bank nope. in, this, in this market, right? And we were able to get a 3% seller carry on the back end. So now we have two notes, the mortgages and the seller promissory note, all under four, you know, call it four and a half percent, you know, for our mortgages. So, you know, we know the debt going into it is very favorable. You know, we know there's appreciation going in the market. Uh, it's a good market to be in. So all these things that are checking the boxes as to why this was a good deal for us and our investors. But this is where things got really tricky. So we go through the process, DSCR. And we get to the point where we are closing three days. It's, I believe it's a Friday and we're set to close on like that Monday. The DSCR lender comes to me and my partners and say, hey, unfortunately, we're pulling the loan for X, Y, and Z. And it was just bad reasons. If you've been in lending, these are reasons that should happen day one of applying for a loan. It shouldn't happen two days before closing. Yeah. And I think it's just a, a, a indication of where lenders to see in the market that they just maybe just don't want to be in the deal. Maybe the, the borrower is fine, but they just don't want, they're nervous about what's happening in the world. And those are the things you can't control. I think it goes back to why this community exists because if that was a normal conventional deal, guess what? The deal's done. Mm -hmm. The seller can't sell their property. We can't buy. Chuck loses his commission. Deal's dead. It has to go back, back on the market. We kind of conversed, me and my partners that Friday afternoon and we're like, okay, what can we do here? And I said, well, we already have the money raised. They want 70000 That's the money that was going towards the DSCR as a down payment anyway. Let's just see if they'll pivot and do the other two on a creative hybrid anyway. We give them the $70,000 down still, and we still close as a portfolio of a hybrid deal. So again, that's a testament to Chuck to, to knowing the situation, knowing like the creative side and how to translate that back to the seller. But yeah, I mean, he's like, yeah, this should work. That was Friday afternoon come Monday. Yep, we're good to go. And yeah, we pivot this and we, we end up closing, you know, three days later. All right. So the lender pulled the carpet from you, essentially, at the final final hour. He took his ball. I and mean, went final, home. final hour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If he wow. tried to prevent us from getting any other ball in the neighborhood to play with, with it just, yeah, shut it down completely. That's interesting that, you know, and I think we've talked about this a couple of different times, but like, I've had some issues with the bait and switch, even if it was a bait and switch, but there was not even a switch. Listen, it happens, but 
here's the cool thing. Like you said, community. Most often folks get discouraged. They, they shut down. They poor me. This wasn't meant to be and so on and so forth. But no, 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 no. This is when, that's when the rubber meets the road. That's usually when the best deals come out. I've been on the podcast for a little while now, and I've had some different friends on here. And Ashley Perez comes to mind. It was number one episode that I've done. And she had an RV park similar to this right at the 11th hour. Financing didn't go through. She had to pivot with the agent and then go to the seller and go, will you do, will you do a seller finance that you did not want to do? And he's like, you know what? Yeah, I want to get in my deal. I'll get into, yes, let's do it. And it was a better deal. So sometimes there's a silver lining in this and the grass gets a little greener. So I applaud you guys for persevering through it and, and figuring it out. So, all right, what's next? Yeah, I mean, we're we're still continuing to, to work with each other and, you know, kind of send deals back and forth. The cool thing about it is with me being fairly new into sub two, I mean, Adam and Tim has been amazing resources and uh, still working on the time. Adam's going to help me with, with comping some deals and, and some things like that because I got to get inside that uh, twisted head of his that... <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he, he's, he's the goat. Yeah, we're still passing stuff back and forth. I made 60 contacts at the Squad Up Summit in April. And as soon as I got home, I messaged every single one of them what my three goals are, asked them what their three goals are. So, you know, still kind of networking and, and, and doing things like that. But we are cooking up another deal. Uh -huh. I actually, got, I, I think we, I haven't checked, but I believe we got signatures from the seller this morning as I got a text. Oh, hold on. Time out, time out, time out. Love hearing that. Hold on. Yeah, I love it. But before we get into that, I was going to say, we got to give him a teaser. Can't, bro, you can't give oh, him the, oh, you can't okay. give him the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> love it. So Chuck is a go-getter, guys. And Squad Up Summit, I mean, ma imagine making all those contacts and then coming home and, and reaching out to all of them. That is a daunting task. I can tell you that's something that I did not do. So super applaud you for that. Gentlemen, I wanted to just back up just a little bit in the six deals now. Where is it look? What does it look like? You guys get it closed. All right. We go to the closing table. What does the deal structure look like now? And then I want to get into the newest deal on the newest signatures. I want to talk about a few other things before we get to that. Let's give the audience a little bit more of that one. Sure. Iowa City, they're right in the heart of the area of the hospital, the university. They were being listed short term or long term rentals. We're converting these to midterm rentals. Final sales price was $570 for all six. And we gave a 80,000, ended up giving an $80,000 down payment to the seller. We raised 105,000 total for the deal. So we had enough money for closing around three high threes, low fours is the remaining balance. And we're getting it at a 4.15% rate. So stellar rate. Seller financed the remainder, which came out to be about a little over 140, I think, on the seller carry at 3%. Okay. Question. Now, were all these in a, his resident, his personal name, the residential mortgages, conventional mortgages? They were actually residential mortgages, but they were actually bought under their LLC. Surprisingly, it was this, actually a very small bank in Iowa. So, you know, I'm sure they were able to do some things there, or, you know, since they're a local lender, you know, those types of lenders can do some things that you can't with like Freddie or Fannie or some of the larger banks. Interesting. Okay. I know some, some folks get around it. They try to do the, you know, buy it under residential than traditional conventional, and then they convert it over to their LLC. Right. And the cool thing is, because I know the sellers, we, we manage a lot of their properties. What they were most excited about this deal when we brought it to them was the fact that they would now get a learn to go out and purchase properties creatively. Ooh. So I've actually had two meetings with the sellers since where we've been looking at properties, spotlighting properties, and just kind of getting them under the whole mix of things because that will be their next purchase is creatively. Love that. And you gave them a little bit of cash. So why don't you go find them a deal yeah. and then just jump in on it? Well, they already spent that cash. I, I, I <laughs> oh, damn. So they, well, they were other, like Adam had mentioned, they were jumping on a deal, I believe, in Dubuque, Iowa. So they jumped on that right away. But they're ready to get going creatively too. So the community is going to keep growing. All right. So Chuck, are you managing these right now? These six? My property management company manages them. I work part-time for the property management company. So I am taking the lead on these six properties. Where we're at right now with them is right now they're all leased and you have people in them, although they're getting ready to move out. So I believe on Monday or Tuesday, we're walking all six properties, seeing what all needs to happen. 
and we're getting ready to get them converted to uh, short-term rentals for the fellas. Wow. All six going to be short-terms? All six, I believe, are going short-term as soon as possible. Love that. All right. So, and then yep. you, I'm sure you have all the construction contacts. You have all, you know, handyman, paint, maintenance, all that. You guys have a stable. Yeah. So, so the cool part, and I think one of the things that really kind of stood out to, to Adam when seeing this deal is we manage another eight out there already mm -hmm. that are furnished finders and that we've already did the flips and stuff for. So yeah, we got the contractors, Iowa city, you got so many traveling nurses, so many students. Unfortunately, we don't have Caitlin Clark there no more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was box office. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a cool place to be. And, and one thing cool that was about that, Justin, I'll touch real quick upon that is you mentioned, keep talking about what you're doing. Just talk to people. It's such a small world and how yep. this works. So when we were doing the DSCR lender, we had to do what's called an HOA questionnaire for lenders. They want to know more about, you know, condos and what they're getting into. The company that was doing it ended up being a broker I had talked to over the past few months to try and build a relationship, tell him what we're doing. And he noticed our name and he actually emails me out of the blue. He's like, hey, I see you guys are buying these condos. We manage these. You have two clients who own like 40 units in the building. Would you guys ever be interested in maybe discussing buying more down the road? He's like, how you guys did this deal is very interesting. I'd like to learn more. You know, and that's when Chuck mentioned the sellers, like it piques their interest. You know, it's just, you never know how it catches. And we're, of course, we're like, yeah, of course we'll have that discussion. So it's going to open hopefully more doors down the road. For interesting, more interesting where the confused mind always leads to no, right? Where someone didn't give you the time of day because they chose just to keep their, to actually tune out probably. But it's when they spend the time to really go, wait, hold on, 30 seconds. Wait, wait, what? Wow. And then they see what you actually accomplished and then there's a FOMO and then they want to know more and then they want to be your friend. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. We talk about that and we see that. And I think it's just, you know, again, getting the word out there, um, telling people what we do. And it's funny. Um, a friend of mine recently just came through and she said that, uh, someone we had met along the path, along my, the journey has been inquiring, what is Justin doing? What is it? What is that? I have to know more. And I was like, wow, that person never really wanted to give me that, you know, I didn't opportunities before, but now all of a sudden something looks fun, but you know, kudos to you guys. And we just keep on doing our thing with a smile on our face and delivering in for community and we're serving others. Adam, what are you putting aside for capital expense and furnishings? Just like do you have a round number in your head to get, and guys, what I mean by this, the audience members, when I talk about just, I call it capital improvements, but we're just going to call, let's call it furnishings and getting the properties up to snuff for the STR, MTR exit strategy they're going to deploy on these assets. Furnishings, paint, you know, decorations, all that good stuff. What's the round number? Yeah, for that, I would say it's probably like, it also depends on the size and what you're doing, right? For So for those, we budgeted kind of about, you know, three to four grand maybe per unit on just what we need when it comes to, like you said, furnishings. Maybe we have to do a touch up of paint here and there. But it, it, it really depends on the property, right? On that next deal, Chuck talked about that we, we have a PSA out and hopefully signed by today. That furnishing is going to be a lot more than what we're budgeting. You know, we're budgeting yeah. between two properties, forty to fifty thousand dollars. We're going to try and make those a little bit more higher end, make those a little bit more luxurious, and, and the larger too. We're talking, you know, five and six bedroom houses. Yeah, for sure. I'm pretty sure he's keeping all the furniture and stuff in in one of the the one that's an active one. Nice, love it well, even better. Give we'll you a little money then. <laughs> we're going to have to have you guys back for that one, one hundred percent, because. The more you do a little teaser too. We'll give you a little teaser too. So that one, fingers crossed, could be a example of a zero down, zero out of pocket, and principal only zero interest seller financing deal. Don't I love those? That's interesting. Two or three times bigger than the last one. And I think we have it structured in a way to where Adam might even get a little kickback from the seller for the first six months too, which is intriguing. Interesting. Kind of one of those where you, you almost make you make money on the deal right away. I mean, we all know when you buy, that's when you make the money, but actually making money off, off the deal is something, you know, baffles people when they're buying real estate. Yeah. Wow, you guys are dangling that carrot. Just <laughs> I won't get right into it right now, but I was so nervous to no, even I reply it. to the email about the podcast because I'm like, it was like it came like that Friday. <laughs> I don't want to reply yet.
It's true. It's true. We don't want to talk about our deals. It's a little uh, bad juju that we have in the yep. game. But gentlemen, listen, hey, you've said it all. How do we get a hold of you? What do you guys, what's the social? What do you want to do? How do people get a hold of you? And especially Chuck is the go-getter. Adam's the freaking mad scientist as well. So how do we get a hold of you boys? Facebook, Chuck Crawley. I'm on Instagram, Chuck, you suck. Uh, even though I don't suck, but it's easy to remember. <laughs> Chuck, you suck on Instagram. And to just anybody listening, I just, I just want to say I was sitting in your shoes three or four months ago. I was watching the YouTube videos. I was listening to the podcast, listening to the success stories and things like that. And I thought to myself, like, this can't be real. But I took action, got the deal done. And, and the biggest takeaway from me is you just have to trust the community. Please, please, please trust the community. Pace has built something beautiful. I've never seen or witnessed nothing like it in my life. I worked at GoDaddy for, for 10 years. I was in the tech world and GoDaddy was amazing. They treated me good. But let me tell you, this community is next to none. Take that step. Take that leap of faith. Educate yourself. Everything's real. It, it, it's incredible. The people are amazing. The, the live trainings are amazing. The vault's amazing. I just love this community and I can't express that enough uh, to where it's life changing. And I hope somebody listening who's kind of second guessing their self, the community and, and what they can achieve, just take action. Stop second guessing yourself. Pick up a book. Pace's Wealth Without Cash was a good one. Tons of good books that the community recommends. I've probably read 10 of them this year. Mindset, educational, just trust the community. It's awesome. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Yes. When guys like you make it even better. Adam. Thank you. Yeah. Um, like Chuck said, I'm available. I try and be av available however possible. You know, Instagram, uh, Scouting for Wealth with the number four. Facebook as well. If you can, good luck to you for trying to spell my name if you can find it, you know, but I'm on there as well. So reach out any way possible. But yeah, it's crazy to think never a year ago when I think I'm talking here with, you know, someone like Chuck that I've developed a good relationship with that I feel we do a lot of good business together, but someone I'm like, yeah, this is guy's a friend now. And, you know, being able to talk to someone I respect the heck out of and Justin Tubanowski and learning from him too. So, I mean, just keep taking action because you never know where you're going to be in a year. You know, a year from ago, I never would have thought I'd be sitting here talking about deals we're closing in. Yeah, Adam, There's no, thank you. I might be in Montana next week and I never seen that in my playing cards in life ever. Yeah, see, same here. I just got yes. back not too long ago, but that's the power of this community. And bro, it's just the beginning. The plans that this gentleman, that Pace Morby has is insane. And I there's some plans that are just, he sees in the future and he knows what's coming. So uh, buckle up. You guys are along for the ride as long as we're all in the same car together. And guys, Adam is, uh, it's Adam Tchaikovsky. So it's C-Z-A-J-K-O-W-S-K-I. And Chuck's is, it's not Crowley, it's Crowley. So it's C. R-A-W-L-E-Y, guys, just so anyone out there. And hey, boys, I'm super thankful to have you, especially Adam too, a New England community member. Chuck, bro, you got some energy that I want to bottle and I want to do some stuff with you too. Let's do it. This community is, we're, we're thankful to have you guys. And without further ado, thank you so much for listening to Get Creative Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Tumanowski. You can find me at realestatejustin.com or any of the socials. We have episodes going out every day, guys, so be sure not to miss one. If you have any questions, please head over to goaskpace.com. And if you're a member of the Sub2 Gator Top Tier TC, we'd love to share a closed deal. Please, please, please reach out to Taya, T-A-Y-A at pacemorby.com. Let her know that you have a deal that you want to talk about, and we'll get you on the podcast. And guys, if you're tired of sitting on the sidelines, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This community is everything. If you can see Chuck right now, he's shaking his head. He's going, yeah, yeah. And he knows. So guys, check out the descriptions. Look and see what's at the bottom of the page. See what community aligns with you. Top tier, Gator, sub two. I mean, once you're in one, you're going to see a lot of the others. Get creative podcasts. Thank you so much.